Fancy technology now, so uh, make sure you got that. You gotta hold it down. Yeah. Oh, I can't hold it on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to Make a High School of Education regular board meeting, fifty seven forty Lawn Avenue, the Board of Education Building. It is now six oh two. PM and we are in the boardroom. It is Thursday, March 21st, 2024. This meeting has been rescheduled from March 18th, 2024. Uh, Mr. Friedrich, can we have a roll call? Yes. Ms. Cheeks? Yeah. Ms. Granger? Ms. Shepard? Present. Mrs. Moore? Here. Mr. Blackwell? Here. Can we all rise for the pledge of allegiance? To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, before we uh, not the official agenda, I would like to move other matters um, from the end of our session to uh, be voted on before the second session. Can I have a motion to approve the uh, We're making the changes um, for the other matters on, on page. Uh, okay. Yeah. Any discussion? Are you coming out of roll call? Mrs. Moore? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Shepard? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Cheeks? Yes. Mr. Blackwell? Yes. We have a report from the treasurer. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, next is reading approval and signing of the minutes of the March 4th committee of the whole meeting. And I have a motion to approve the minutes. Someone. I'll take it. Any discussion? Saying that, can we have a roll call, Mr. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Ms. Shepard? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Cheeks? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Blumenthal? Yes. Motion carries. Now we'll have a report from the treasurer. Thank you, Mr. President, board members, Dr. Keenan. Um, tonight, included in my section, I'd like to go to the monthly finance report. We are running uh, well with expenditures. We're only about 45000 available compared to the forecast. I would like to point out on page Four, which is the February revenue collections compared to prior year. It says that our revenue is down almost 1.5 million. The main reason behind that is last year we collected more in our property advances, number one and two. People were paying their taxes essentially earlier. This year we didn't receive as much, but then the month of March we did receive uh, that amount plus a little bit more to make up the difference. So. Our next report for March, you'll see that we're running well with revenue as well. Um, other than that, I do want to point out that we do have a couple of certificates, one for the district invoices and the other for the contract with the Martini Construction Company. These are just to ensure that we do have the funds available to pay those invoices and do that project. And then with that, I recommend um, for approval Roman numeral number two, items one through four. All right, colleagues, uh, the treasurer is asking us to approve recommendations number two, one through four. Motion to approve the recommendations. Thank you. Any discussion? Same now, Mr. Preacher, can we have a roll call? Yeah. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Ms. Shepard? Yes. Ms. Cheeks? Yes. 
Mr. Blackwell. Yes. Motion given. Um, now we'll have a report from the superintendent. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board, Dr. Friedrich. My report this evening, I'm going to begin by um, thanking uh, Mr. Curtis, the technology department, Mr. Nyamke, for the major upgrades we're doing right now with the, the board office here. Um, there's a new camera system, there's a new audio system, and we're, we're working on navigating that right now. Uh, this is the first time we've had it in place. It just actually got completed uh, this morning. Um, so uh, really nice upgrades for the board meetings and board rooms. So thanks for those who were involved in putting that together. Second thing I'd like to, to mention is I'd like to thank uh, the board's negotiating team and MHTA negotiating team uh, for working together last week to, to uh, secure a tentative agreement. Um, I just want to commend uh, both parties for respectfully um, representing both organizations and talking through how to best um, reach an agreement that's satisfactory to the board and to our staff members. And um, that'll be looking forward to discussing and moving at, at another meeting with the board. For my um, recommendations for this evening, under Roman number two, our recommendations are numbers one through eight, and that includes um, our summer learning from K-5, 6 through 8, and 9 through 12 for next year, or for the summer. It also includes um, uh, something we've been working for for the um, lunch line, the awarding bid for the GPD group. And personnel recommendations, my recommendations for this evening are 1 through 4. And I'd just like to point out, uh, Mr. Ms. Sue Luazo has been a member of the district for 30 years, and she is retiring, and so we appreciate her service to the district and wish her well in retirement. Thank you, Dr. Keenan. So, superintendent has asked us to approve recommendation Roman number number two, one through eight, and number three, one through four. Any discussion regarding that? Um, I just have a question. The, the summer school session. Are the kids allowed to go to both sessions or is it just separated? Okay. So you mean by the grade levels or are you talking about the grade? Yeah, the grade level. So it's they're, they're, they're just they're, they're sanctioned out by the grade levels for the for the grades of the children again. So the, the time sessions are are aligned with the grade levels. So if you look at them like the, the, the time sessions for K through five, the programming is only for K through five at that time. Okay. The programs will be separate and different for the middle school, and then again for the high school because there are different types of programming as well as grade. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. That's awesome. Any other questions? Seeing that, can we have a motion to approve the recommendations? I move. I move. Yes. Mr. Fraser, can we have a roll call, please? Ms. Shepard? Yes. Ms. Sheets? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Mr. Blackwell? Yes. Motion carried. Of the NBA conference. The pre registration for the first day that we're there, did we get, I know we've gone down, we have to be there on the 5th, and they got pre registration for that day. Are we registered for the like sessions on that day? Uh, the pre registration sessions we are not, but we can add those. Okay, yeah, because yeah, we're there, we have to do that. Okay. We just can't go there. Yep, absolutely. There, okay. Yep. So then your days are going to change. This is correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So the next item is the other matters, which is the NSBA conference. That is for all. Five of the board members to attend the NASPA conference in New Orleans, April 4 through 7. 
can have a motion to approve sitting in the conference. Thank you. Any discussion? Yeah, we can make that. We okay. can imagine that on the next meeting. Okay. I'll get it on there. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other Ms. Cheeks? Yes. Ms. Shepard? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Mr. Blackwell. Yes. Now we have visitor participation. See the visitors. Right. I, I want to ask a question. Yes. Um, it was Moana and Ms. Bill that went to uh, Ashford University. So I want to know how did that go about the lunch? For the audience? Oh, I'm sorry, it's difficult to hear you back here. I'm yeah. sorry, I, I was just asking about the lunch program. Oh, this is after you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Um, was it last Friday? Uh, Friday. Last Friday, we attended Astabula, um High School in their district, and we reviewed their um food service um, vendor program that they have there for the total district for the elementary, the middle school, and the high school. Um, the services that they used was NETS. Correct. And that service um, is is um, contracted to go through to take over and help with the, the selection of foods that are offered. And fresh foods um, is made daily. Um, Mr. Mawada and I went there, and the setup and the way that the um, the cafeteria was um, presented was very um, appealing. And the way that the structure they had set up, the way the students um, was able to enter into the um, cafeteria for the lunchroom was was um, very organized. They had uh, um, several different stations that offered um, fresh salads, fresh wraps. They had uh, an entree station set up that uh, specialized in what the meals would be for the for the um, for the daily um, hot meal. They had a grill station set up, and then they also had uh, a subway station set up. And in this um, Bravo section is where they change out every six weeks. And they said that it goes from Subway, um, like Chipotle style. Um, so it, it changes where the kids could have um, a, a more of a many a more of choices to to um, get a selection for for different items that they offered. They also had um, beverages containers there that the kids could buy extra stuff from, like juices, um, zero sugar um, beverages, and they had like a Snapple cooler that the kids could buy extra coolers for, for Snapple, products from Snapple, um, yogurt products, ice cream products, um, um, nutritional chips, they had baked chips. <laughs> so it was a lot and, and the way that they had it set up, the students came in and they picked out an entree, they, they were able to freely come in and um, pick out a hot item, pizza, cheeseburgers, hamburgers, and then go and get the a la carte that they need to add on. So it was very well organized. And the kids seemed to know exactly what they were supposed to be getting and and um what they were allowed to get, what they wanted to get extra. And then, you know, they freely checked in and out. Um, they had a policy if they need to get extra, they did it within their time period because in between the lunch periods is when they let um, other students come in that came in from the special ed classes. So um, it's very knowledgeable, very ran, very smoothly. Breakfast um, was was coordinated the same throughout the entire district. They didn't have the separate items that was offered, you know, at the different levels. So um, I was really impressed, very impressed with what was offered. The kids did um, seem like they were enjoying the hot food that was offered, and um, and they were eating the food. So 
and it was fresh food. The salads are made fresh every single day, so it's not like they were brought in a pre-made. Um, talk to the cafeteria workers, and and they seemed really, you know, pleasant and really happy about the work that they were doing. So. I would echo everything that, that Mrs. Moore stated, but I'll just add a couple of things on the uh, operation side. So, as she mentioned, METS was the contractor for that particular school district. Uh, they did go out to bid. Um, they went out to bid approximately three years ago, and they signed a five-year contract with that company. They were in the fifth year of that contract this year. I mean, I'm sorry, third year of that five-year contract this year. Uh, the METS representative actually has an office at the high school. So in, in a sense, he's a member of the staff, but is actually a METS employee. Um, and in addition to assisting or leading the charge relative to menu development, he also oversees or handles some of the ordering and oversees sort of the day-to-day -day operation within the kitchen. Uh, if there are any staff issues or concerns that may raise to say disciplinary action or a fact-finding meeting, that's handled by the food service director. So they still have a food service director who works in the district. Uh, their members are unions. So those types of issues are handled by that director as opposed to being handled by METS. Uh, the other thing that stood out to me is they have a system there called school pay. Um, the way that we do counts is just with a, with a, a hand counter, uh, which is acceptable under the uh, Office of Nutrition but they utilize a system, once again, called school pay where the students punch in their code. Uh, that system has multiple different uses. So outside of tracking the meals that the students are getting, and I, and I think it's important to state too that they're a CEP or community eligibility provision to district two. So they're comparative to us in that respect. But that system can also be used for a la carte purchases. So students or families can go onto a website, uh, they can add money to an account. If there are additional items that they want to buy, they simply punch in their code and those funds are deducted. If they don't have money in their account, then of course the students can't get those extra items, but they can always go on a smartphone or a computer and add those funds. That system is also used for any staff purchases. So while Mrs. Moore and I were there, we, we noticed a number of staff members coming in and also getting meals, including the treasurer. And they also have codes as well. And it's the same concept. They have to have money on their account in order to, to purchase those meals. Currently, what we do is we bill employees in a sense, we do a payroll deduction every other month. This system would address that issue and eliminate all of the backstage work that we have to do for the payroll deduction. So those are some, some things that stood out to me relative to the program. And, and as Mrs. Moore said, it was a pretty impressive uh, set up there and really had a college feel as opposed to yeah. a school or high school feel. Even the, even the cafeteria had, you know, a design set up where the students could see the, um, what the, um, what students were doing when they were going to like a college and had a board, a section where they highlighted the students that were going to college and where, where they were going like the previous seniors. Um, they also focused the athletic department in there where um the put in you know where what were the ratings and and the um the, the season scores of what their games were as far as their um the results for uh, basketball you know wrestling it was all there and then they had the seniors highlighted within the cafeteria so it was very appealing of uh, where an ownership of what was going on with the with, with the district with the students so it was very focused in there so it, it was nice it was. Did either of you have uh, discussions with any of the students about how they felt about the food? I didn't. I didn't talk to or communicate with any of the students. Yeah, we did not in a moment. You know, as far as having a conversation with the students, we just you know watch the students and and um, any pictures that we took, we took without any students being in, in there inside of any of the pictures. So, if you like to look at any of the pictures that we have. We can download them and um, you guys can have copies. When you talked with the staff, did, were you able to get any feedback from them about like working with it? Yes, um, we um, talked to some of the staff members that were preparing the food and um, they they um, just said that some of the items that they did want to prepare 
and that um, was ordered. It was some of it we, they couldn't afford, like Mets would want to order, um, have it on the menu, and it was maybe a little bit expensive. So they would have to have alternate items to be offered. And um, another thing is that, you know, sometimes they said there was just a little confusion about um, the transfer of vets with the contract with um, the union, but it was worked out with the um, food service um, nutritional coordinator there who handled the employees um, within the, the school district. So they do have um, someone to go through and manage that. My conversations with with the food service workers, it was, it was at a different time uh, than Mrs. Ross. We kind of split up at some, some point in time, very surface level. Um, I didn't get into conversations about how they felt or what their um, experience was with men's. It was more so about the equipment and the setup of the space is the conversations I had. Uh, but, but had an opportunity to have some deeper discussions with the men's representative uh, who's stationed at that school as well as the food service director. Um, do they offer any like programming for the students, like backpack over the weekend programs, or they provide snacks or anything like that for kids to have food over the weekend, or even like culinary things that they have or anything that they would like? They do not. I, I, I asked about any additional programs outside of the regular breakfast and lunch service, and the only other program that they offer is the after school snack program, which is something we do here as well. And that program is only for those schools that are providing, you know, some type of because the program it can't just be like a latch key. It has to have an academic focus, or it has to be a homework help or tutoring. But some of their schools do have those after school snack program. But that wasn't available at the high school. That was more so at the elementary level. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Ross, do you have? I have another, I, another statement I want to talk about. Sure. I'm sorry. So about a month ago, I went up to the AC. Um, it was a basketball game going on at that time. And I just wanted to get the vibes and see how everything was going. And actually, I wanted to go upstairs and see the uh, track. But I couldn't go up there because it was a game going on at the time. Um, as I was there, the first thing I noticed was the bleachers. When I had to step up on one of those steps, it was so high. And I couldn't real then I realized there wasn't no banisters, there wasn't no railings there, there wasn't no space for the seniors to be uh area to sit at. So as I'm sitting there, the game is getting, I'm at the freshman sophomore game. So now with the uh JV, JV is that what it's called? Okay, so now I guess a long time. So now it's going to the senior game. So now more people are coming in. So as I'm sitting there, it started getting warmer in there, warmer. It was a little girl sitting in front of me with her her mom. So now as the people steady coming in, now it's starting to reek with weed and alcohol. So now I'm getting a little shocked, like, okay, why are you letting them in here if I'm, this is all the smell? So I was like, okay, the ventilation is very poor in here also. So coming to what I'm about to say, instead of you guys talking about building that upstairs, I think that money should go to somewhere else in that gym that it'll benefit everyone. So I just really think about that. Okay. Don't mind, Dr. Keenan, Ms. President, I can respond to the ventilation situation. Yes, go okay. ahead. So there are actually, and, and I've discussed this in previous board meetings prior to you being on the board, uh, there are 10 air ventilation systems on top of the athletic center. Very old. Um, we're not sure when the last time they've been changed out, if they've been changed out at all. Of those 10, only one of them is functional at this time. We have already entered a contract with Brewer Garrett um, prior, I would say, about fall season to get those replaced. It was something that we have to wait until we get into the warmer weather season. We couldn't do it during the winter, but it's going to require a crane. So the plan was to get that project done in April once we were out of the winter season. So once again, that proposal has already been submitted, approved, parts have been acquired. We're simply waiting for the weather to improve and then take care of replacing those and that should improve the ventilation within that building. 
In the interim, we did purchase floor fans. Um, I'm not sure if those are on doing your uh, game, but there were four floor fans that were purchased um, to go in each corner of the main floor, you know, get some cross ventilation of air in the space as well. Okay, but what about those bleachers? Because I, I'm just saying, when I climbed up the first step, it was hard for me to get up there. And it was nothing for me to hold on to, to get up to that first step. So that's just the things I'm thinking that needs more attention to, more so than a track of stairs. Yeah, I mean, the, the main thing is, is that, you know, when we get feedback, we look into it. We use that feedback and make determinations. So I appreciate the feedback. And then, you know, we need to just take a look at what we're doing and where the prioritization is. And, you know, obviously, feedback can come from anybody. It can be a board member, it can be a community member. And then we just have to use that feedback, think through what we're going to do, and then make recommendations to the board as a whole. So we'll, we'll do that. Appreciate it. Yeah, discussion. Yeah, no, I have a motion for us to move into the second session. So moved. Second. Ms. Sheets, any discussion? Yeah. <laughs> no, please. Mr. Friedrich, I think we can take one call. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Shepard? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Cheeks? Yes. Mr. Blank? Yes. We are now in executive session. It is 629. Thank you all for coming out. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Um, we're going to executive session for personnel, negotiations, and legal no action being taken.